So Kayla from My Meal joined us on the Down to Business podcast today. And I'll be the first to tell you that while this episode did make me a tad bit hungry, it also really made me curious. It also opened up a new perspective for me because as someone who doesn't have any food allergies, it was very interesting hearing from Kayla, who was diagnosed with celiac disease at age nine, just how it affects her and really what that disease can do for other people as far as food restrictions and food allergies. Kayla really gave an amazing breakdown. And for me, it was really mind blowing just to see how such a disease can really have an effect on you, not only physically, but mentally. But it also really brought up some curiosity for me and really made me wonder about what other restaurants, what other food trucks, what anyone, chefs, are doing involved in the food industry. What are they really doing to make anyone and everyone feel included, feel safe, and feel like, you know, that they can eat just the same. So Kayla and the team, man, they are really doing amazing work. And you'll hear even in the interview that she was talking about debuting the app that is now officially live for all Colorado residents. But if you're not in Colorado, please be on the lookout because she's looking for ambassadors. She's looking to bring it to all states across the United States. And then eventually she wants to go international because she's been someone who's traveled to 36, 36 different countries. And across those countries, you know, different people, different cultures, you get different ways and different reactions to when you have different food allergies. And some of them are always not so pleasant. So she's really, like I said, doing amazing work, a lot of focus on nutrition and really just making sure that men, women feel comfortable, but their food allergies are taken care of and treated just the same as anyone without them. So without further ado, enjoy episode 136, Safety First. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Down to Business podcast here with Tamar Turner. So sitting down with Kayla today, and Kayla is somebody who really honestly showed me the importance of LinkedIn and really just getting the brand out there, getting everything out there. So originally when I first started to promote the episodes of the podcast on LinkedIn, I always would just kind of do it from my personal page, not really knowing that you could, I guess I kind of knew you could have a business page because I, I see a lot of different business pages out there, but I didn't know if I had to be like a, an official, like a, uh, like a Walmart or like a Nike or like a Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. I thought I had to be one of those household names, but no, I was actually talking to someone at my job and he was telling me, no, bro, like just make, you know, you can put your logo up there. You can make it official. You can even tag it from your personal page. So ever since then, that changed the game for me. But essentially, Kayla was somebody who tapped in with me after we dropped the episode with Omar, Helping Hands in Healthcare, man. So Omar was somebody who I was able to come across with, with working at WeWork and just all the things that he's doing in the healthcare space for veterans and just for people alike. But so Kayla followed up with me and told me that she was very excited to listen to the episode and everything like that. And then in just going through her content and her bio, I found out she's a business owner just the same. So it was very, you know, once I was going through the page and the content, I have kind of been following her along until we scheduled the interview. I was learning so much. I feel like what she does is very unique to today's society, especially, you know, with everyone, just with our preferences and just with our diets and how we feel and, and what we like and what we don't like, but also sometimes some things that can be hidden from us and what we may not know what goes on behind the scenes. So don't want to reveal too much for y'all, but maybe even some of y'all kind of got it just from that little teaser right there. But very excited to be sitting down with Kayla, very excited for y'all to really hear one, what she has to offer, how you can help her and support her, but two, how she can really help you and support you and, and really just, you know, make you feel as confident and as trusting as possible when making decisions moving forward. So Kayla, how are you doing today? How's everything? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for that intro. You crushed it. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, I, I, I try to, I really pride myself on my intros. I feel like that's really the, the first time that the people really get to hear you, get to see you, get to know what it is you have going on. And I want them to stick around. So I try to really put everything I can into those. So if you approve, we're all good. We did something right. But nonetheless, you know, like I said, very excited to sit down with you. Very excited for you to just be able to introduce what you do to my audience and, and even be able to, you know, kind of teach us some things just as you have been teaching me along the way, but also just hone in on specifics and how you can be of assistance to others. So first, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? And then second, can you just tell us what brings you on the Down to Business podcast today? Yeah, absolutely. So after after that great intro, my name is Kayla um, and my company is My Meal and we help people with food restrictions be able to find safe restaurant meals. Um, and a big part of my story, I was diagnosed with celiac disease when I was nine years old. So that sparked my interest in food and wanting to understand what kinds of foods I'm putting into my body. And so while I got my degree in marketing, I studied nutrition on the side, became a certified nutrition coach, um, and really started diving into that realm. So I was coaching others on weight loss, helping people like me who had celiac disease or other conditions like candida or EOE. And I just really found a passion in helping people be able to 
overcome um, the mental health challenges that you sometimes have to face not having control over what we're putting into our body. And so that's what really sparked my passion and why um, I'm creating my meal now. And yet again, we hear another story of how a business was born as a result of just a personal experience or just a personal interest, or like you said, really just recognizing that you study marketing really has nothing to do with what you're doing now but on the side you know you were so passionate about this you love this so much that you you picked up nutrition and then became a nutrition coach so um the first thing i really want to talk about is the celiac disease so i actually mm-hmm. kind of came across that in an unfamiliar way so we had someone at my job who um he had that but there was so pretty much somebody was applying for a job and he sent in his resume he sent in everything like that but on top of what he sent in he sent in like two dozen crumble cookies so I don't know, for most people who know crumble cookies are like those really big like a big yeah. insomnia with they look all crazy and you can only take like two bites and then you're full or do you know your your sugar is going crazy so yeah. but so when we called him to let him know that hey the cook because we had sent him a notification hey you have a pet you have some food here to pick up he wasn't replying and as somebody who he's order he orders food regularly we were just kind of getting a little worried and we saw how many cookies it was and so we were just like okay well we need to figure out a home for these before we leave and do something so but nonetheless when we called him and told him what they were he told us that he could not consume them because he had celiac disease and everything like that so at the time one i had never heard of that two i didn't look it up in the moment so i really didn't know what that mean but i made the assumption that along those lines he could not eat sweets or something along in that film so can we just i guess let's set the table let's let's clear up any rumors or any misconceptions what exactly is that disease and how does it affect you know the body and the diet yeah absolutely so celiac disease is an autoimmune condition closely related to something like type 1 diabetes. And it makes it so when you consume gluten, it basically acts as poison and kills off the cilia in your small intestines. And so what the cilia's function is, is to make sure that you're digesting nutrients from your food. And so when you consume gluten and it's killing it off, you're taking away the function that's allowing you to have functional nutrition. And so you see all kinds of symptoms as a result of this. Personally, I puke for like six to eight hours and have sharp stomach pains, but other people can go through depression, anxiety, hives. Like there's over 160 symptoms that can occur due to um, having celiac. And The part that's not talked about a lot, which is the part that my business is solving, is the additional mental health challenges that come with that. So from a functional standpoint, you can't have this food or else it's going to make you super sick. But from an actual practice standpoint, that means that every time you go out to eat, every time you travel, anytime you go over to a birthday party um, where food is involved, you now have to worry about that. And you have to ask if if it's safe and you have to understand if things are cross-contaminated. And so normally when people eat, they don't think about these things. They just consume food. But when you have that type of food restriction, whether it be celiac or a food allergy or some kind of other medical condition that causes you to have to think about food, it now becomes a big part of your focus and what you have to do on a daily basis. Okay. I'm definitely glad you cleared that up for me because that was not where I was going to go with that at all. I was more so just thinking of the cookies themselves, but no, the fact that it encompasses just so many things, that's, you know, that's a lot. And the fact that it can be tied to the, the interesting, but like, I guess, painstaking thing for me as someone who doesn't really suffer from food allergies, or at least I don't think I do as of to date, I haven't had anything that's made me. Hopefully crazy. you don't. I wouldn't yeah. wish it on anyone. <laughs> the weird thing is, you know, just from hearing people about the seafood and just hearing people who, a host of everything, my bad, I'm trying to, I think my lights just went off in here, but, um, but nonetheless, you know, just hearing things like that along those lines, just, and really just more so never knowing how it will affect you. Because I feel like, you know, just as everyone's diet is different, everyone's preferences are different, everyone's, you know, just what they like versus what they dislike is very different. I also do feel like, you know, it can affect everybody different. Because like you said, there can be a host, you, for instance, for you, you may throw up a lot, but for somebody else, they may have highs or the itching or the allergic reaction. Or for somebody else, it may really affect their mental and just that anxiety and just different things like that. But I think one of the greatest points you made was about what people don't think about when it comes to cross-contamination. Now, that was something to me that was so new. 
And if, if it wasn't for really my dad being Muslim and just growing up like that and going out to different restaurants and everything like that. And, you know, just from utensils touching or them being cooked on the same stove or them being on the same plate or too close to one another or anything like that. Just really what that can do for people, especially for you have to think like for him, he hadn't put this in his body in years. So even the slightest little sign of it or anything like that could really turn him completely all the way off. But that's also really taught me how to move moving forward. We do a lot of different food events at my job and catering and things like that. And one, I always think about, you know, allergies and gluten free and vegan and the vegetarians and everything like that. But I also think, too, and something I really had to start to begin to pay more attention to was when we were serving utensils, not making sure everything is washed properly, making sure people aren't switching things or making sure, you know, I try to sometimes space the the allergies or like the vegans or like the glutens, I try to put them in a totally different section so that they don't even get, you know, mixed up or mixed in because you really never know. And my dad used to be one, he was quick to ask, you know, quick to just try to figure out, you know, how it was cooked, where it was cooked. And sometimes he had to send a lot of things back and, you know, to other people that could be just seen as like annoying or anything like that. But you have to think about the person who has to do it. Nobody wants to do that with their food or feel isolated or feel, you know, oh, now the spotlight is on me or now I kind of need special attention and everything. But at the same time, Nobody also wants to be sick. Nobody wants to have to deal with that or with the repercussions or anything like that. So I, I love that, you know, for you, this may have not been, it may have not been the greatest experience with, you know, growing up with this and just having to really learn your body and just figure different things out and go through certain things and not feel the best and get those sharp pains and everything. But I love the passion behind it because, you know, the same way you've had to educate yourself, the same way you've had to learn different things, what works for Kayla, you 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 also are now putting that knowledge out there for other people to learn too. So that kind of takes me to my next point about nutrition. So you went from marketing, you know, and as somebody kind of in that field and along those lines, I get that. And I get how that is a complete, you know, shift and transition. But you went all the way to nutrition now. And so much so you even took it a step further to become, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you said a certified nutrition coach? Yep. Yeah, I got my certification. Um, and then also worked in restaurants as well, which yeah. I forgot to man mention. Oh, but well, no, we were, we were but they're all interconnected now. So <laughs> we were going to get to it for sure. But no, okay. So with coming with becoming the certified nutrition coach, what did that entail? What did you have to do? Because, like you said, I know you already branched off and had to study some things, nutrition and everything like that. But in order for you to really be certified, in order for you to be considered a coach, what was that process? What did you have to go through? Yeah. So I went through a program called NCI. Um, nutritional, I don't know what it stands for actually, but it was a program that basically is like an intensive workshop where you have to go through multiple days of courses. Um, and then you have to pass a test and a practical. Um, so the practical was like giving a mock client and building them a plan and like describing what goes into that plan and why you made certain decisions. So there is a lot that goes into learning the course material and then making sure you pass it. But that was like the nutrition part of it. And then the more practical part of it, once I actually got my certification, was actually working with clients because that's where you learn the most. So when I was in college, I was actually working for a startup that that's what they did. They did different types of courses and then they had one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so I was one of their one-on-one -on -one coaches. They gave me clients and I got to, you know, have this experience with tons of different women. It was definitely women focused. And then after that experience, I branched off and had my own clients for a bit before going full-time on my meals. So that was kind of my nutrition experience but i was doing that all kind of simultaneously while i was still getting my college degree so got you so i could imagine that was probably a lot you know just a lot of knowledge a lot of learning but also when it i think it kind of helps too when it's something that you enjoy when it's something that even sometimes it affects you it kind of makes you hone in differently or it makes you really be able it's nothing like you know being whatever type of learner you are whether it be visual auditory hands-on anything like that it's nothing like really being able to experience something but go through it at the same time you know it kind of helps that it helps those principles because it's like wow this is real time or this is real life you know these are this is not just examples but i'm i'm really having to go through this so the fact that you know you really even embraced and immersed yourself in that i i definitely take my hat off to you because that can be a lot school in general can just definitely be stressful can definitely be a lot but when you know you're into something or when you in 
when you're in at least what you thought was going to be your interest or your field of study or your career path. And then you kind of have to pivot a little bit. Sometimes that's not always the easiest thing. Motivation can be lost. You know, things can happen. But the fact that you're still making it happen, I think that that's so good. But on top of that, what I really hear with this is the amount of education, the amount of value, just the amount of insight that you're being able to provide to people out there. Because, you know, I'm sure that with having food allergies, with being allergic to certain things, with just not liking certain things or not even necessarily knowing sometimes what all goes into just different ingredients how it's prepared, when it was prepared, everything like that. You've you've definitely been able to add a lot to people's lives. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, just from the website or just from consulting with you or even just from how people now experience restaurants and things like that, I'm sure they've come to you and, and been able to thank you or just been able to talk about their experience per se. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned going now full time with my meal. So what did that really consist of? When was really my meal born for you in a sense and then when did you really realize okay I'm, I'm i'm getting some pretty good traction with this I'm, I'm i'm being successful with this i'm really you know i'm moving in the right direction to really then take that leap of and I'm, i won't even really call it a leap of faith i'll just say you left because you knew all along whether you had faith whether you just you know you just knew because kate you know you just knew you were doing the thing but when did you really realize okay full time my meal this is what i'm doing all in no looking back yeah, so let me backtrack a bit just based on some of the last comments that you made. So um, while I was in college, I was bodybuilding, and that is why I was so interested in nutrition. So that is definitely like a layer of added um, component. And so I was like obsessed with food and obsessed with fitness during that time. And so it was relatively easy for me to coach on the side of schooling because like that was my life. I was like, I go and I train at the gym for three hours a day and then I coach clients and then I do my homework. And like, I was a boring college student. I was not out partying. I was like in the gym. So that was my life. Um, and so during that period of time, not only did I have my celiac, which added a layer of complexity to eating out, but I also had the bodybuilding, which means that I literally needed to know everything that I was putting in my body, how much oil was in it, how much butter, which is like impossible when you go to a restaurant. And so that's when I like sparked the idea for my meal because I was like, there needs to be a better resource for us to understand more transparently, like what is going into our food. Um, and obviously it evolved over time to be more just allergy focused, but I definitely still maintain a vision of, you know, I want nutrition information on there. Like I want to be, see be seeing as much um, transparency as we can without you know, compromising the restaurant's, um, you know, comfortability be because sometimes restaurants don't want to give all of the ingredients, you know, um, that is like their baby and they spend sometimes years making those types of recipes. Um, so that experience really informed my decision um, to go full time on my meal. And then also um, after I stopped bodybuilding, I was like still kind of working on my meal, but it definitely like took a dip because I went through a binge eating course. And I talk about this very openly now because um, I am healed, but I did have like a suite of disordered eating due to my bodybuilding experience. And one of the biggest things that I kind of worked through during that period of time was the delicacy of eating out. So when you have a food allergy or celiac, what you'll hear a lot of people say is like, oh, I went to a gluten-free bakery and I bought 20 different items and I ate them all on that same day. And while this might seem like funny to the community, what that actually is, is it's a sign of overindulgence because you're finding something safe, you're overindulging, and you repeat that process over and over again. And so during the binge eating coaching that I went through, that was like a big part is like challenging myself to eat out more, making eating out less of a delicacy, um, you know, really making an effort to go find safe food so that it could be a normalized experience for me. And so going through that process, it only reiterated the importance of my meal to me because I was like, okay, not only are we like, you know, wanting to bring transparency to the table, but this actually has the potential of really helping to fix a lot of food anxiety and mental health problems that we see amongst, you know, people with celiac and with food allergies. Um, so my goal is really to normalize that experience so that it becomes less of a delicacy and something where, you know, if you want to go out to a restaurant tomorrow, you'll be able to find somewhere safe instead of having it be this frantic thing where you have to research for um, two days and figure out a safe place to go and call the restaurant. Like there's a lot that goes into it um, that it creates this super high stress and anxiety, anxious situation. And so 
like I decided to go full time on my meal and ditch the coaching um, at, in 2022. So like beginning of last year, because I was like, this is what I want to do. I'm really passionate about, you know, fixing, um, you know, or helping people get to that next step in their mental health journey. Um, and so it was just like a very important cause for me. And I decided it was time to give it my full attention. <laughs> I love that. This, I feel like we're definitely getting into, one, I, I definitely think you're taking us on the journey here, but two, I even think that we're really diving into the psychology behind food and just really how the effect that it can have on you, depending on, you know, sure. how you acquaint with it in a sense, just your experiences. Like you said, the bodybuilding really puts you in a different facet, but for somebody else, you know, they could have an interest in food for a totally different reason and not even realize, you know, that they're overindulging just because, you know, it's comfort for them or it's something that almost like an escape. And it's something that we sometimes cannot realize until it's almost too late or it's until somebody else tells us or until we really take a step back and, and get out of that mode to really look back on some things like, wow, I was doing all that like at one time or like continuously or like multiple, you know, it's a lot. So the fact that, you know, you've, you've had to kind of go through all of this in a sense and at the same time learn still keep that best foot forward, still keep going in a sense, still keep elevating, still keep propelling and still keep adding on different elements. So now to attack my meal specifically, once you, you pretty much went all in, once you kind of said, okay, this is it, this is what I want to do. Where did you really start with organizing things? Because like you said, you're, I, I feel like you serve a really great purpose here and not even one. I feel like it's definitely multi-purpose, multifaceted, but how did you really decide what you wanted to hone in on, how you wanted to hone in on it. And I'm not even necessarily where, but I would say the what, the why, and the how. Like, how did you really formulate all of that together to really build it to what it is right now? Yeah. So like I kind of mentioned, I really started with a nutrition focus. And then as I dove deeper into it, I realized that like we just needed to start somewhere because there was very little transparency in general. And allergies was definitely the most pertinent issue that needed to be addressed because people are dying. <laughs> and so like that right there is, you know, screams like this problem needs to be solved. And so that's why I started really kind of diving into the allergy angle and just connecting with other people in the community that were experiencing this issue besides me. Um, and so I kind of started with building off my Instagram following. So right now we have almost like 10,000 Instagram followers. Um, and that's where I share a lot of my content and connect with a lot of my community. And so I really use my community to help kind of create what the app should be, because I feel like talking to users is really important. I'm building it, yes, to help solve my own problem, but also I'm building it for them. Um, and so like the app has evolved over time in terms of feature set and what's the most important based on what my users have told me that they feel like they need. So that's kind of the what in terms of um, like how I've come to the current feature set today, which is, you know, put in your food restrictions, find a vetted and curated list of restaurants and then be able to see exactly what on the menu is going to be safe for you. In terms of the why I like took that approach um, is because, like I said, actually listening to your users is so important. Um, and like the best example I could give of this is like last week I connect. I had a meetup with like thirty of our users. Um, they were telling me how they were using the app and. They were saying, you know, the filterable allergy menus are so great, but like where it starts is the vetting process. So like if you could add more apps, even if they're just vetted and don't have the filterable allergy menus, like that's super great for us. And so like those kinds of things just help, you know, drive me in the right direction. So now we're starting to just vet restaurants without doing the menus um, so that we can, you know, build up that restaurant database more and be able to expand to other cities easily. Um so yeah, that's kind of the evolution of the product and how I've kind of come to where we are today. Um, and yeah, we're just going to continue, you know, building out our restaurant database, listening to our users. We keep feature lists in terms of what people want, but at its core, we're just kind of, you know, we're not focused on all of the fancy stuff. We're just focused on like the one thing that's really going to make a big impact for people. Love that. Love that a lot. Now, you, you kind of spoke about the database and, and having to vet these restaurants and kind of having to go one by one. So walk me through that as well. That really sounds like it could definitely be a lot of work. Is, is this you kind of just sourcing? Because 
I, when I was on the website, it makes you kind of put in your, or at least it asks for my location and then it kind of tailors mm-hmm. it to what's around you. So I know that you're not based in Tampa. So how did you pretty much start to compile these lists? Are these like all, did you have to kind of one by one, just reach out, call people? Was it kind of a thing of with the chains? Was it a little bit easier? Do you kind of have a team, an automated system? What did that really look like for you when it came to selecting restaurants, finding out what they offer, finding out what's actually in it, finding out what's in it that they care and share to disclose? How did you really kind of formulate all of that just the same? Yeah, that's a great question. So Right now, we just have users reach out to us when they have positive experiences. And like I said, because I have um, a larger Instagram community, I have people DMing me all the time being like, I went to so-and-so restaurant. You should go check them out. And so I have a list of like over 200 restaurants where I just document every time I see something from a user or they message me saying that they've had a positive experience with it. And then, yes, we do reach out to the restaurant. It's not like a hard process to get them on. Um, We do have them go through a vetting process to understand, you know, what are their processes? um, What what is their understanding of food allergies? Like, am I going to be able to trust them to read an ingredient label correctly? So we do have like a checklist and kind of like a quiz of things that we go through to kind of check off. And then if the restaurant doesn't meet them, then we have other resources and offerings for them that help bring them to that level so that we can put them on the app. Um, But the app is very much like a vetted resource. And so like just to get the restaurant involved, like if they're good to go, um, it's like a 15 minute process. But if, you know, they need more resources, then, you know, we work a little bit more closely with them to make sure that they kind of are brought up to that tier before we can put them on the app. That's amazing. And I think it even helps too when almost like you said, you kind of have your users doing the work for you or you kind of have them vetted <laughs> just the same where you kind of have them going out to do things, you know, and I, yeah, I, I think it, it's, it's yeah, for sure. And I definitely think that it makes it unique to that experience. And I'm sure that with this, you've probably learned about some restaurant that you may not have heard of or just some specific. Oh, yeah. And maybe they've probably been able to add people because, you know, I could imagine if I was if I had that large Instagram like that and I was asking people for like semi business owners or semi entrepreneurs or creatives, my, my DMs would probably be filled just the same. So I kind of like that because I'm pretty sure you're hitting different spaces and places and you're seeing different faces and learning so much along the way. So that's kind of cool that it's very user friendly and user interactive and the fact that you get so much feedback from these people because ultimately like you said while you are trying to help yourself while you did come into this because this was your interest your passion and things you're ultimately trying to spread that well spread that knowledge to other people just the same so they may not have to vet just the same or go through all of those difficulties or problems or the anxiety or the, tr- the just the trouble you know that could really come with food because like i like i even kind of spoke about a little bit earlier coming on here honestly just me with no real food allergies never really having a bad like food experience meaning like pain or like almost like life or death like yes i've had the food poisoning and different things like that but nothing like lifelong sometimes i get food poisoning because i'm just being greedy you know and i know that i shouldn't have eaten that or maybe something wasn't prepared correctly or anything but you know some people this is everyday life for them or this you really have to ask questions or, or you have to go to different certain gatherings or arrangements and you may not be able to eat certain things or you may have to get something prepared separately. So the fact that, you know, you are you are finding a way to assist these people and, and not make them feel like, you know, outliers and things like that. I love that just the same. Now, with my meal, with thinking about everyone who you've worked with, everyone in some capacity who has been a part of, whether it be the app, the website, just formulating things, the vetting process, anything like that. What does it look like really from a team perspective or like a company perspective is just this really just like a Kayla thing. And like you said, a lot of it is the user base. Are you kind of building out in different locations with other people? Is this something that you want to eventually like, obviously, you know, right now I feel like it's definitely very global, but do you kind of have any global insight as to kind of what you want this app, what you want the website, what you want the business itself to look like kind of moving forward as you kind of gain more traction, as you make that 10 K 20 K 40 K 50 K different things like that. Do you kind of have any outlook in that regard? Yeah, for sure. So I'll go um, like bottom up. But basically, right now, I am like the only full time person working on it. I do have contractors and people on my team um, that just like do different suites of things that I am not great at. Um, Like I have a development team, I have somebody who manages our website, who does design. So she like helps me prototype. So I I definitely have people that I call on for different things. um, But I am 
I am the only like founder of my meal. Um, <laughs> and then we definitely use our user base heavily. So we also have an ambassador program. And so something I'm starting to roll out with my ambassadors is um, they're going to start vetting restaurants. So we've had a lot of people be like, hey, how can I get involved? How can I vet restaurants? And so we I've been working on like developing a system um, so that they can be able to do that. So I already have a few ambassadors kind of out there in different cities, um, kind of like testing or like piloting this program. Um, but once I lock that in with them, we'll be rolling it across um, all of our ambassadors, which will just help us to scale a little bit and add all of those restaurants onto the platform um, while maintaining the fact that they need to be vetted. Um, so we're rolling that program out soon, which will help us expand nationally. And then in terms of international, uh, that's definitely the goal. I'd like to break language barriers because traveling is such a hard thing when you have food allergies and celiac. So eventually I'd like the filterable allergy menus to be in Europe and Australia um, and like all these different kinds of places so that you could go there, look at the menu and like not even have to have a conversation with the server. Cause like, I don't know, I've, I've been to 36 countries and there are definitely certain countries where the servers are not very nice to you and like not welcoming with food restrictions. And that's just like their culture and that's totally fine. Um, but it definitely makes things a little bit harder when you do have a food allergy because communication is so key. So I definitely have plans to take it international, but kind of taking it to like the top level, my overall vision is to just like help our food industry become more transparent and inclusive. There is a lot of problems with our food system right now. Um, there's really not any traceability. Like you have to call manufacturers sometimes to like figure out what's in the food and like even sometimes they don't know so they just tell you not to eat it so it's just a very like broken system um and so my goal is to help you know create transparency around that system um all the way down to like the um like the farmer level and what's so crazy to tie this back to how we were able to kind of come into contact with one another to really hear what Omar wanted to do with healthcare and really just break that barrier and recognize that like you you even touched on it being a broken industry. I feel like you're doing the same with food and everything. And I feel like, you know, I, I really have to commend. I commend everyone who comes on this podcast. So I don't want anyone to feel like, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm not really shouting you out or anything. But I, I really kind of take it more to heart when you're tackling something that's really just not easy. You're in an industry that, like you said, is just so kind of oversaturated with just misinformation, with just mistrust, with yeah. just misleading things, with just people not even knowing themselves what's going on. But if it's making money, if it's getting consumed, well, let's just keep pushing it out. Forget the health, forget the benefit, you know, forget the yeah. benefits behind everything. And that's unfortunately just the sad reality of the world that we live in today, you know, but when we have people like Kayla, when we have people like Kayla who are working diligently with my meal, with teams, with people across the world, across the United States and everything to really just make things better for everyone, man. I, 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 I just love that. And I definitely just, I, I think I, I adopt a different appreciation for it because, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy one to have to deal with that on an everyday basis, especially to just be sometimes to just be born with things like this or to sometimes have nobody asked for any of this from celiac to just food allergies to everything that comes with it. But, you know, really not letting that, stop you from living life in a sense or not feeling like you're missing out on anything, but rather taking what you have and taking what, what's been thrown against you and capitalizing on that, really making it, you know, a benefit as opposed to like a downfall. So I, I definitely have to, like I said, I'm going to keep saying I, I take my hat off to that because it's a lot of great work that you're doing. It's a lot of things that one, you kind of got on here and talked about, but it's also, I know that, you know, when we close our laptops, when we end this interview, there's a lot of work that you're doing behind the scenes from an ambassador program to just having to vet people to just thinking about international, because like you said, those I haven't been to 36 different countries, but I can tell you that, you know, there are definitely some countries where if you turn away certain food or don't eat certain things, they kind of look at you with that side eye, like, hold on, what's going on? Or it can be seen as like okay. no disrespect or anything. But hey, no disrespect. This is just my health, y'all. I have to, you know, I have to adopt this and really do what I need to do. So yeah, it's a big part of culture. Like when I, I was talking to a restaurant owner who she does like different kinds of Asian food um, and she is allergic to MSG food coloring and corn, which is like 
super hard with Asian food. And so she created this restaurant where like none of her products have any of that in it. Um, like almost everything on the menu can be made gluten-free. She has like tons of soy-free options. So she's just made this like really accessible restaurant for people that have that kind of issue. But when I was talking to her about her story, she was like, yeah, my parents or my family like shamed me because I had this allergy. And they were like, you're like, you're like lying to yourself or, you know, they were just like giving her, excuse my language, but they were giving her shit for it. Um, And it's so terrible because she was like, no, this is my health. This is what I need to do. So much so that she like literally started a whole restaurant to make it accessible for more people. So I love stories like that. I think they're so important to share. Um, and that's kind of, you know, why I love working on my meal too, because I, I get, I get to help people find restaurants like that, that really truly care and have started it because they're trying to make food more accessible for people. Well, I'm definitely hungry after this conversation. <laughs> I, will, I will certainly tell you that, but no, I, you know, to just really just look at so many different experiences, look at just so many different preferences, opinions, everything like that, and really just work to, and not just work, but diligently work at it. You know, I, I, I love what you're doing and I'm definitely from down to business to my meal. We're wishing you nothing but the best, nothing but success. And I'm definitely encouraging my followers, my audience. Look, I, I know a lot of y'all with the food allergies, with the preferences, with the diet, the cookbooks, with everything like that. I implore you to, you know, reach out to Kayla and just see what can go on. Maybe she can bring something or pilot something in your city, or maybe you can help her with something, or maybe you've had some experiences at restaurants that could be, you know, of benefit to my meal and just getting that on the platform because, you know, she's working, she's cooking some things up and she's really making it happen. So, you know, Kayla, before I tell people where they can tap in with you at, where they can find you at, everything like that, everything of the sort, if they want to find out more information, do you feel like there's anything that we have not touched on today, whether it even be some last words that you want to leave for people out there, whether they be entrepreneurs, whether they be foodies, whether they be people who have had to deal with just different allergies and sometimes the, uh, just the repercussions that come with, you know, just, just having allergic reactions, just having the celiac or anything like that. Or do you feel like, you know, there's anything that we haven't touched on even with my meal that you want people out there to know specifically? Yeah, I, I think just kind of like bringing all of those things that you talked about together, Um, something that I preach and I think is so important is just relationships, whether that be relationship with your client or with your community, um, or honestly with yourself, with your own mental health, like really being intentional about the way we build relationships is extremely important. Um, and so like, I like to put that at the center of everything that I do, which is why I'm so focused on, you know, community engagement, um, and having, my community really steer the direction of my business. Um, I really love talking to my restaurant owners that I partner with because again, like they have amazing stories like the one that I just shared Um, and kind of bringing it full circle, like LinkedIn, you know, reach out to people, um, reach out to me. Like I'm always here as a resource. If you have a food allergy, I obviously love talking about food allergies and celiac. So I will always respond to you, Um, especially like on my Instagram. I talk to people all day long on there um, because I just really love to kind of help people um, through their entrepreneurial journey or through their food allergy journey. Um, So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of leave you guys with that. Um, Whether you reach out to me or not, just like keeping the relationships always at the forefront of your mind. Such an important point, man. And it it really goes to show y'all she's not just, you know, she practices what she preached because she reached out to me. And nonetheless, we're here today for the interview and we were able to hop on the call. And and like I said, since we connected on LinkedIn, I've learned so much. And so you don't have to just have a food allergy or suffer from celiac or or have anything food related to to just go through this space, to just connect, to just build those relationships, have those conversations. I've asked a few questions on here today that I just didn't know about. Like I said, she gave me the whole rundown on celiac and had you would have asked me that. 38, 40 minutes ago, I would have just thought it was about sugar and cookies and you can't just call it that, but she she brought it all home for me. So no, Kayla, one, just thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing. I have to pay a lot of homage to you, a lot of homage to my meal, to the teams, even to everybody out there within your following that has really helped because they're an integral piece of, oh, of, what's, yeah. of what they're really building in this community. So I love it and I, I shout each and every one of them out. But you know, arguably now, one of the most important pieces is letting the people know where they can tap in with you at. So for everybody out there looking to, whether it just be pick your brain, whether it even 
even be, you know, find out a little bit more about the ambassador program or just learn, just want to connect with you, just love the energy, love what you offer, maybe even maybe going through something similarly, where can they find you? What are the best places to connect with you? Social media, website, everything of the sort. Yeah, for sure. So our Instagram is at mymeal.foodallergy. So definitely go give us a follow there, um, especially if you yourself have food allergies or celiac. I share a ton of educational content and I'll actually be launching like a little mini course here just because I get so many questions about like how to eat out. Um, and so that's the best place to connect with me. Feel free to slide into my DMs or click on the link in our bio there. Um, but then our website is also findmymeal.io. And that's how you can download the app and also sign up for our wait list if we don't have restaurants in your city yet. All right, y'all. So she said yet, which means that she may recognize that there are some places and spaces that she hasn't hit but it won't be for long. So definitely tap in. If Even if you see your city that's not on there, you see your city on there and you just want to add or contribute or have some questions, look, you never know where a connection, where a DM, where a simple follow can take you. For us, it took us all the way here to a podcast interview, to some information being spread to audience alike. So I love that. So like Kayla, like I said, thank you so much, one, for just connecting with me, one, for just hopping on the call. We were able to kind of just, you know, give each other some report background and, and, and figure yeah. all of that out. But two, thank you for coming on here. One, T giving me the celiac 101. I definitely do feel like now nah, I got to go teach some people and make some things happen and, and really let them know. But two, just for all the work that you're doing within this industry to, like you said, mend that broken system to educate people and to let them know that, you know, you're not alone in this and what you're going through is a okay. And you don't have to let it, you know, really be the downfall, but rather instead of letting it break you, just let it make you and move forward from there. And to everybody, you know, who continuously taps in with the podcast, who continuously shows us love, who I know for a fact, y'all going to be reaching out to Kayla. I got some people in my head who I'm going to be sending your page to specifically, but I better be seeing some of my mutual followers tapping in with her just the same. I, but I appreciate y'all. We love y'all, man. We're definitely keeping it rocking and rolling as the year progresses. This has been another episode of the Down to Business podcast here with Tamar Turner.